Hello, everyone. This is Tina Zhou, uh, the moderator for this panel discussion about how Equino is used. Today, uh, we are honored to invite uh, Shah from Facebook, Paul from at and and Aaron from LFH, Edge, and uh, Petrin from Baidu. So welcome, everyone. Thank you, Tina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, first, I would like to give some uh, very uh, basic background of Equino Release 3. We just announced it. Equino Release 3 delivered a fully functional edge solution covering the multiple sections like IoT, enterprise, telco, and cloud. Since 2018, Equino continues to gain the community, community support. Now we have more than 30 blueprints in place for the deployable edge solution. Also, it just several edge use cases. We have multiple user lab and a sophisticated community lab to speed up the edge innovation. In addition, Equino delivered fully functional new blueprints for deployment in release three, such as the 5G Mac, AI Edge, Cloud Gaming at the Edge, Android in Cloud, Micro Mac, and hardware acceleration using Smartnik. We also defining and standardizing the APIs across stacks. Uh, so far, we published a white paper and more is on the way. Equino introduced the tools for automated blueprint validations with the SpruVal, the security tools for blueprint hardening and edge APIs in collaboration with the other projects on the Elf Edge. Um, Equino community has participated in several industry outreach events like the ONES today and the others. So what is a Equino Blueprint, you may ask? A Equino Blueprint is community integrated, tested, deployable, and to an edge stack. Based on the specific use cases, we do fully CICD, prove and test it in the community, and provide the support on the community lifecycle. That's why we, uh, we have the production quality. This is a beautiful slide about how the different blueprints fits into the end-to-end -end from user edge to the service provider edge. So uh, our panelists today will talk about some of these blueprints. So uh, let me start asking my questions. So my first question for the panelists, there are some blueprints integrated Magma software as upstream components would you elaborate the use case and how Equino blueprints are used in the terms of Magma? I guess uh, this question is more for Shah. You can hear me. Thank you, Tina, for the question. And um, I, I, uh, I wanted to uh, start by basically uh, pointing out that Magma is, a, is an open source software platform that gives the network operators an open, flexible, and extendable mobile core network solution. And our mission is to connect the world to a faster network by enabling service providers to build cost-effective and extensible carrier-grade networks, right? So that's kind of like the top-line mission statement for Magma. It's a, it's a project that started by Facebook connectivity team and has been made open source in 2019 and has since been turned into a community project. Now, um, we Magma and Equino uh, have, have been working together since late last year, early this year. And as you pointed out, there are we have some, some a few blueprints that include the software, uh, that is Magma software, into it, uh, into the blueprint. And you ask about the use cases. The, the primary use cases we're looking at um, starts with the, the private LTE deployments. Um, as we know, um, in the US, there's uh, the, the CBRS, the, the 3.5 gigahertz spectrum is being opened up. And other parts of the world, their shared spectrum are opening up. 
and enabling ways for private LTE deployments. So that is the first use case that we are um, looking into. Um, and, and followed by, we're also looking forward to the, uh, the private 5G um, networks as well. So it will start off with the option 5, 5G networks supporting that, and then eventually the private 5G um, SA networks. Those are the three primary use cases that we're looking at. And it will be um, evolution, starting off with private LTE, and then moving over to the option 5, 5G support, and then finally, uh, I mean, eventually private 5G um, SI networks. Okay, so those are the primary use cases. Uh, what, what Magma um, upstream components are, are looking at with uh, with the crime. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, very good. Uh, thank you, Shard. Uh, we really appreciate Facebook uh, hosting our March meeting uh, twice. So we have the Equino events twice a year in spring and in four. Next week, we'll have another meeting, but this time is virtual. Last time, we have a great experience discussing MagMod collaboration with Equino and also the other topics in Facebook headquarters. And after that, the coronavirus happened. Oh. Yeah, I missed those days. Thank you. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, my next question is about the AI edge commercial deployment. So the edge scenarios are very important uh, commercial scenarios for the AI applications. There might may be different types of hardware, OS, etc. It's kind of hard for the AI application providers to adapt their products with different kinds of uh, components. Fortunately, a criminal community and Elf Edge member companies can help to do the validation and development or to support their products. The AI application providers need to state their requirements and collaborate with the member companies in their blueprint validation integration labs. So the AI application providers are more likely to find potential partners and the potential commercial market. We have already seen and heard a lot of deployment from China, uh, which has some uh, AI edge commercial deployment examples. Maybe this question I will ask He Chen from Baidu. Would you like to share some stories? Okay. Uh, hi, Tina. Hi, everyone. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, the AI edge uh, blueprint family actually includes two blueprints. Uh, the first one is cool uh, education video security monitoring, and the second one is uh, Robo Taxi. Uh, previously, uh, and also previously used the name of Robo Taxi. Uh, the current name is IVICS. And uh, uh, the first one, uh, video security monitoring, has uh, included in Ocarina Release 3, and uh, uh, this blueprint. Uh, actually, has been deployed in Beijing, Shanghai, Hangzhou, Zhejiang Province, and and, and uh, many other cities in China. And uh, as for the, uh, the as for the video security monitoring, uh, this this blueprint can be used uh, in scenarios such as security monitoring, classroom concentration analysis, and uh, factory safety production and the kitchen hygiene monitor. As for security monitoring, uh, it can, by conducting uh, smoke detection and densely in uh, densely populated places, such as industrial parks and the community uh, properties, uh, to quickly detect whether there is a fire uh, in order to reduce the damage caused by fire. And uh, this blueprint has been used in many cities and provinces in China. And, and, uh, and for classroom concentration uh, analysis, uh, by using this blueprint, we can conduct a full evaluation of the overall course and the concentration of individual students, which can help teachers and school colleges to fully understand the teaching situation. Uh, according to the concentration data of each course, uh, we could conduct a targeted cross knowledge test and uh, strengthen the 
this efficiency. And uh, this blueprint can also be used for kitchen hygiene modeling. And uh, they can improve the uh, uh, the traverse. Uh, they can improve the safety and the hygiene of the photography process in many restaurants and uh, many many companies. Uh, oh, thank you, Hachin. I think this is uh, very promising, and we hope to see more uh, deployment of the air edge in China, uh, in the States, and Europe, and the other continents. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, since we have uh, discussed the uh, blueprints uh, relevant to the AI edge and the uh, magma the integration. So here comes the technical questions. Uh, what's the difference between this blueprint? And we also have the radio edge cloud blueprint for 5G deployment. And can anyone share some uh, insight uh, and opinion about how technically we manage this different blueprint. So, sure. Uh, sure. yeah, I, 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 I would like to invite, uh, uh, hey, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I can talk about that. So, um, a, a crane of blueprints are, are essentially independent teams. So different blueprints can be run differently and have different focus. The, the Radio Edge Cloud blueprint, for example, is the one that I'm most involved in. And our goal with the Radio Edge Cloud blueprint is to pro provide something like a, a classical appliance, like you might find from a hardware vendor that supplies uh, the hardware and software together and um, as, as a complete system. The, the difference here being that we would like to support multiple hardware platforms with the same open source software on top of them. And so our, our primary use case was the ORAN, uh, which is the ORAN Alliance's Radio Access Network Intelligent Controller. So this is a, a new open source piece of software that is designed to interact with E node Bs and G node Bs in the radio access network and provide intelligent control functions. And so that entire project that, called the RIC is within uh, the Open RAN uh, Alliance, and that is not part of a Crano, but we view it as an upstream project. And what we do in a Crano is package that into a physical appliance. So we started with one hardware platform, uh, which is Intel based, and we have subsequently added a second hardware platform that is ARM based. Uh, physically, they're in the same form factor. And what we have is a continuous integration and deployment system that pulls in the operating system, supporting software middleware, and it deploys that onto a, a cluster of specific hardware that is specified in the blueprint as a platform for running the RIC, and it's, it's purpose-built for that. Other blueprints have other purposes. So some of the blueprints deal with uh, things that run on, for example, a Raspberry Pi, or um, as Hachin was talking about, an AI blueprint with a, with a specific purpose uh, of AI and running on, uh, and some blueprints run on multiple platforms. So for example, there are blueprints that target cloud environments. So there may be blueprints that are in, intended to run on AWS or another cloud platform. And Acrano allows all these blueprints to set their own goals and yet operate in a, in a shared structure in terms of documentation, in terms of governance process, and, and gives a, a, an easy way, uh, specifically the, the Acrano website under LF Edge gives an easy way for someone who's unfamiliar to come in and look at, for example, the Acrano Release 3, 
there is a, a one page summary of the goal of each blueprint. And many of those blueprints might not be at all relevant to a given uh, person, a given company, but Acrano allows that framework where you can come in, see a high level overview of what the blueprints are, what, what their use cases are targeting, and then zoom into a detailed view of the blueprint and then finally in, interact with the with the team behind the blueprint uh, if it if it's suited to your use case oh, thank you paul i think this is uh, very precise and uh people can uh, understand and how to work with uh, different blueprints and blueprint families and how to map to the use cases this is very useful thank you paul you're welcome uh, with that yeah let's uh, uh prepare another question about the industry iot at the smart device edge so uh we would like to ask the panelist can you tell us about the smart device edge and what does it mean and when talking about the specific blueprint around industry iot where does elf edge's projects fledge and eve coming uh, I will start uh, with uh, Aaron. Hi. Um, yeah, I'll happily answer that. Um, I mean, first of all, the smart device edge. This is um, comes out of our white paper around the LF edge uh, taxonomy. Uh, there's many parts uh, to edges, and through each industry, has different kind of terminology. And what we were trying to do with this white paper is to uh, kind of unify all the terms and kind of give each one, um, you know, kind of a, a uniqueness and a meaning that would uh, go across industries. So the smart device edge, as you can see here, is uh, part of um, kind of the user edge. So this is the part of that last mile. Maybe in an industry or in a factory, there might be some type of uh, data center um, that's you know local to uh, you know to the facility, but as you go out from there, there's going to be some type of small device. This is and what really makes this a little bit different is this is a small compute device. It, it has to be able to run some type of um, uh, uh, code on it, so that way it can do some type of uh, determinations or make some actions or that. And then when you go farther south of that you end up at uh, some type of constrained device. And these are usually the sensors at the end. Um, so a, you know, a simple example might be something like a temperature sensor that feeds into say a Raspberry Pi, the most simple thing. Um, and then that Raspberry Pi has connection um, out to uh, the internet, to the cloud. So that temperature sensor, um, that's the uh, kind of that constrained device edge. It's just grabbing data and that's it. But uh, when you go to the smart device edge, that would be the Raspberry Pi, it can act. So in a simple scenario might be if the temperature goes over 25 degrees Celsius, turn on the fan. That's, that works really well. Um, you know, because it can do that local thing. There's no reason to send that data up to the cloud and get a response back from the cloud. So that's our simple case. Now in industry, in the industrial IoT, so the IIoT, um, you might have machines that actually, you know, are vibrating. And um, if they go out of tolerance, you can damage the machine. So this type of smart edge now becomes a little bit more powerful and a little bit more reactive, um, meaning you know, hey, I, uh, the vibrations are going um, out of, uh, you know, our tolerance. We need to shut down that machine before it, you know, uh, damages the machine. So you don't want that type of critical data going to the cloud. Instead, it has to be done there at the smart device edge. But at the same time, we're going to want all the data that we can push up, up into the cloud, most likely, so that way we can do some type of predictive maintenance at a later date. Uh, so we can really do a deep animal, uh, analysis. And so that's how it works, uh, you know, with the smart device. And then, and what we've done with our blueprint, which kind of works at this uh, location at the smart device, uh, device edge, um, 
we we um, have been working with uh, two of our projects. One is e and one is Fledge. And what happens is this Fledge is a set of middleware. Um, the uh, Fledge is a set of middleware. And what it allows you to do is abstract these uh, devices. So that way um, you don't have to know about each one of these sensors because in the industrial IoT world, um, it is going crazy of how many different devices there are out there. I mean, there's just, there's no way to go to each one. So you need to kind of let this uh, set of APIs or abstraction that allows you to do it. Um, so now that allows you, Fledge allows you to do that at that point, but it also allows you to process that data and to react to that data. Um, so it's, it's a quite a little powerful tool that you can put you know, on that device. Now with Eve, Eve works um, underneath that. And what it allows you to do is abstract the, uh, the actual hardware. And so therefore what happens, this becomes important when you need to update the code. So Eve works as in essence, almost the operating system or the virtualization of the code, or excuse me, of the device. So, and then Fledge sits on top of that. And so now if, if you have just one device, this isn't really that important, but in the IoT world, it's you know it's really the IoT scale. I mean, these could be hundreds of devices, and these devices don't necessarily uh, they might not be in a nice clean room like a you know server farm somewhere in the field. They also might not be um, even protected um, at all, so they can be exposed. So you have to have all this type of security around it, both physical and um, you know, computer type security to make sure that these devices do not uh, get harmed or uh, somebody tries to compromise them. So, working together, even allows you to access this And so, anyway, and with that, what bringing these two products together allows you to uh, really work with any cloud. You can have any type of uh, organization uh, orchestration console uh, to help you pass new code down to Eve and you know allows you to choose the type of devices that you are, are using usually it's whatever uh, currently there and it's been used in the past so that's kind of how we you know bring in fledge and Eve we combine them into one blueprint and in our blueprint family this uh, the first one we happened to test was with a uh, thermal imaging camera, but basically the same setup. We use the same blueprint to create to monitor uh, vibrations, um, and you could use it uh, just a regular camera. You could use other type of sensors um, to be able to do this, and that's kind of the concept of these blueprints. Is, is that allows you to just um, use it as kind of an abstract thing, and then you can customize it to your specific needs. For uh, for you know that implementation. Well, thank you, Aaron. I <laughs> think uh, this, yeah, this will be in the release four, right? Um, for the maintenance prediction yes. blueprint. Yes, both the family and um, one or two actual blueprints will be as part of uh, uh, release four. Uh, we will keep continue when Fledge and uh, 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 Edgex Foundry in the downstream for certification upstream community like CNCF, ORAN, and CNTT to more uh, integrated their components and also uh, accommodate their requirements. Of course, the Magma and um, we talked today 
And also, uh, we will enhance more the functionality and automation of the edge workloads, uh, like cloud native, uh, etc. And how to get engaged? You can visit this website. You can find the Equino as a stage three uh, project. And also, we have a mailing list of technical discussion and TSC and blueprint and feature project that you can subscribe to. And we also have the Tuesday, Thursday TSC meetings for PDLs and for subcommittees. And we have um, the meetings like a technical community call. I have a question because we because uh, we have a lot of uh, much to talk we didn't have the full introduction in the beginning I would like to ask our panelist is um, would you like to talk about yourself uh, how does your day line uh, day job look like let's start from Sha oh sure yeah we would love to Tina so um, my name is Sharaman I'm part of the Facebook connectivity group. I support and lead a group here that focuses on the network infrastructure, different parts of the network infrastructure. It includes the RAM software, core software, edge software, as well as uh, backhaul software. So it's a pretty um, almost except a pure Wi-Fi for which we have a separate group. Uh, my team supports the different infrastructure um, activities. So. My day job looks like working with groups like the Crino and the industry. Um, at Facebook Connectivity, we, we're not a vendor. We do not build products so much, but we work a lot on technology development, um, R&D, and um, basically uh, building open, disaggregated, and, 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 and various types of open source projects in the network infrastructure area. So Magma is one of the core uh, projects as part of that. And uh, I support the team, engineering development. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, those sort of things. So I will pause there. Glad to be here, the rest of the panel. Thank you. Forward to more collaboration uh, with Magma. You know, was that a question to me? I, I, something got chopped off. I couldn't catch the whole thing. Uh, uh no, no more question for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hedrin, would you like to talk about yourself? Can you hear me, Hedrin? Okay. So, Paul, would you like to talk about yourself? Sure. I, I think we're running out of time, so I'll be brief. Um, I, I'm in AT&T Labs, which is the organization that uh, traces its history back to Bell Labs. And so we are uh, partly a research organization and partly an organization focused on what goes into production. And the radio intelligent c controller that I spoke of uh, earlier is a, a big part of what we've been working on. So we are a, a contributor to the ORAN uh, Alliance. And so what we do is figure out what is going to go into uh, AT&T's network and particularly the wireless network. We're, we're very much focused on the 4G and 5G wireless network. And so a lot of what I deal with is what is what is the future of the equipment uh, that is going to go into that network, and that's where Acrano uh, fits in because between Acrano and ORAN, we are looking at what what does a controller for the five G network look like. Okay, thank you, Paul. Uh, very impressive as well. And uh, we look forward to work for the 5G uh, big deployment in the future releases. Hey, Jen, would you able to use this uh, microphone now? It seems uh, he's frozen. Um, Aaron? 
Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Aaron. Um, I'm with and, um, part of that. My main job is that I'm the community lead and developer advocate. So if your question is, is you know, do I like to talk about myself? No, actually, I really don't. Um, I like to talk about my customers, which are the members, um, the community members at large. So everybody on this phone call is uh, basically my customer. And I'd love to get out there, uh, get people together, see what they can create, and then amplify that. Um, give people the opportunities uh, that they need, whatever uh, problems they have, um, help to try to solve those. Um, and then uh, be able to amplify the great work that the community does. Our Crano is one of the, the nine uh, projects that we have under LFNG, and it's one of the two that are at our top level, um, our most mature of the products, the other one being EdgeX Foundry, um, and then you know the additional seven projects that are underneath. So that entire community is my customer, and those who I like to, you know, kind of, as I said, like to promote and show off with the great work that they're doing. So. Great, thanks a lot, um, Aaron. Uh, thank you for your support for the community. Yep. Yeah, that's really yep. appreciate. So, Hyojin, would you able to talk now? Uh, can I hear you? All right, that's huh? fine. So, Hyojin. Hyojin, can you talk? Hello? Yeah, go Hello? ahead. Just uh, one minute or 30 seconds. No. Okay, okay. This is a question from Baidu. Uh, I'm working for Baidu uh, as in the uh, in the field of 5G and uh, MEC. And uh, as for Baidu, we are trying to uh, provide uh, Mac platforms and MEC solutions for uh, scenarios like uh, uh, AI, AI and uh, uh, smart smart cities and uh, smart uh, uh, communities and also uh, smart industrials uh, uh, we can provide the we are trying to provide uh, the whole solution from from end to end and uh, especially at the uh, past and the uh, ice layer for the vertical interface uh, and the for as for uh, Acrino, uh, uh, open source, uh, the video security, the, the both of the uh, video security monitoring and uh, the uh, Vico uh, and IVSS blueprint will engage in uh, risk for. No, okay, Tina, I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you, Hyojin. Thank you, everyone. Uh, time limited, so uh, we need to wrap up. But thank you again. I appreciate. If uh, the audience have any questions, can either ask live or uh, email to us. Thank you all. Thank you, Tina. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you.